Light and Ether by criticizing the relativity of Einstein and revisiting Michelson Morley experiment. Hello, I am Akram Louise. I am a marine engineer, an author and also a researcher of physics. In this important video, I will give explanations about the controversy of the ether, the light and about some works of Einstein, who is still being strangely defended by all the media. The speed of light has been calculated by Maxwell after fixing the electric and magnetic characteristics of the source and of the empty space. However, the relativity of Einstein considers that the speed of light can only be constant for all observers thanks to the Michelson-Morley experiment. Actually, the biggest problem of theoretical physics is that Einstein's relativity is considered holy and sacred since it venerates the light. I am not saying that all physics must be wrong. But only a principle that Einstein and Lawrence and many others stated by fixing the light speed for all observers, which makes us study light in a very complicated and strange manner. I will start by explaining the disproof of Michelson-Morley experiment. My easy and simple article proves mathematically the obvious null result of Michelson-Morley experiment. You will find the link to the article below in the description of this video or by searching on ResearchGate for the article titled, The Correct Formulas of Michelson-Morley Experiment. As I said, the principle of relativity which states that the light speed never changes due to the reference frame is a result of the Michelson-Morley experiment. And since my article tests the experiment, then I have the right to consider that the light is a normal wave and that the photon is a normal particle until the investigation of the article is made. Hence, we have the right to change the light speed by the changing reference frames during the proof. The last result of my article is obviously the null result. The rate or percentage of fringe shift by the formulas demonstrated in this work is a perfect null and thus it confirms theoretically that the result of Michelson-Morley experiment is perfectly null. However, we can't conclude that the luminiferous ether doesn't exist like Einstein said or that the speed of the light doesn't change by a changing reference frame. A photon reflected from a moving mirror can be modeled by a bouncing ping-pong ball like Harvard University did in some of its experiments. Unfortunately, Harvard University gives a relativistic explanation by saying that the photon is observed from two reference frames and provides the motivation for time dilation. However, in reality, when the light photons bounce off a moving mirror like in the ping-pong ball model, they react with its atoms to be reflected. Consequently, the photons change their velocity vector after each impact depending on the velocity vector of the atom, and thus of the mirror. This phenomenon is similar to a ping-pong ball bouncing without slipping inside a box that is moving sidewards. In this case the ping-pong ball gets the box velocity as a sidewards component of its velocity vector after it bounces and thus the ball seems to accompany the box in its movement. I made the new corrected formulas of the Michelson-Morley experiment by considering these effects of the reflection on the light and, as I said, the percentage of fringe shift calculated by these formulas is perfectly null. This proves obviously that these new formulas are the only correct formulas, and this video is made to stop hiding this scientific finding. This is a drawn simplified diagram of the apparatus of Michelson-Morley experiment. This simplified diagram describes the paths taken by the light beams in Michelson-Morley experiment. We consider that T1 and T2 are the two times or durations needed by the two half beams to reach the captor, starting from the source and after the reflection of each light beam from its mirror. We consider also that the splitter doesn't influence the light when it passes without any deviation through it. Otherwise we will have to use compensating plates to correct that. The new technologies made nowadays perfect results for Michelson-Morley experiment. All we should care about are the formulas and the logic of our calculations. The half beam 1 is the one reflected directly from the mirror 1, and the half beam 2 is the one reflected from the mirror 2 which is perpendicular to the line of the source light beam. In this figure, we considered arbitrarily that alpha equals beta, 
but gamma is different, also, the symbols of the chrono times are tau. Tau 2 and tau 3 are also considered arbitrarily different until this work makes the investigation. In this work, the vector V is the velocity vector of the mirrors and C1 is the speed of the light directly after the source. We can consider that, C1 equals C if the source of the light is fixed during the experiment, where C is the famous speed constant of the light. And we can consider that, C1 equals C plus V if the source of the light moves during the experiment with the velocity V, however, the capture of interferometry is considered always fixed during the experiment. For half beam 1, we can prove geometrically and easily this formula of the time or duration needed to reach the captor, for interferometry. Let's start by giving an example of the calculations for half beam 1 by considering that C2 is the speed of the light returning after being reflected from the mirror 1. We considered in this step that the period of time where T1 equals the chrono time tau 1 indicated in the figure. We prove that. During the reflection operation of the light, the speed of the light photon absorption by the reacting atom of the mirror is C1 minus V. Consequently, the photon will be emitted with the same speed, same energy at the absorption relatively to the reacting atom along the same axis, I. However, since the atom is moving during the emission with a speed V times vector I, then, C2 equals C1 minus 2 times vector V. By following similar steps we can prove easily this formula for half beam 1. You can try to calculate each part of the formulae of the Mitchelson-Morley experiment by considering the effects of the reflection on the light. Just like I did by using the ping-pong model and changing the light speed like if the ping-pong ball accompanies the box in its movement. You can find all the explanations in the article The Correct Formulas of Mitchelson-Morley Experiment. You will find the link below in the description of this video or by searching the article on the website, ResearchGate. We can also easily prove this formula for half beam 2. Hence we conclude this formula for half beam 2. And finally we conclude the final formulas of the 2 times T1 and T2. But strangely, an easy mathematical count proves that T1 equals T2. This proves mathematically the obvious null result of Mitchelson-Morley experiment without needing any relativity of time or space curvatures like in the works of Einstein. We proved also that in this experiment, the angles alpha, beta and gamma are all equal, and that the two half beams hit the splitter at the same chrono time, tau 2 equals tau 3. This is the strongest disproof of Einstein's relativity. And I invite you to do the same for the other similar experiments such as, Kennedy Thorndike experiment or, Ives Stillwell experiment. No one could disprove my work about Mitchelson Morley experiment even if it is read by well known scientists on many interfaces and journal indexes. However, the media continues to ignore it and defend Einstein's relativity, maybe for pure religious purposes, and this is against the science objectivity. This is very weird but I will expect a positive reaction from you in order to defend the research values and objectivity. As I said, the formulas demonstrated in this work allow us to study the light as a normal wave, and to understand easily all the other light effects without being obliged to use any relativity of the time or space curvatures. I understand that fixing the light speed as a constant made formulas easy to derive and thus the conclusions were maybe easy. However, those relativity derivations can only be correct if the source of the light isn't moving, fixed reference frame. Furthermore, they are always difficult to use. Let me give you another easy example, and this time it is about the pound ribka experiment. Why a particle of light shouldn't have an ordinary mass even if the redshift or blue shift of light have been discovered. 
The gravitational effect of the light made me agree with the quantum mechanics experts who don't consider that the photon mass is absolutely null but very small instead. This gives me the right to use Newtonian mechanics when dealing with light photons like in this example. Let's consider during this experiment that the photon has a mass m that causes the gravitational effect. Consequently, during the gravitational blue shift, we have m times g equals m times gamma, where gamma is the acceleration of the photon downwards, and g is the gravitational acceleration. Let's consider that vr is the velocity of the received photon, and that v is the velocity of the emitted photon, and thus we have g equals vr minus ve divided by t where t is the time between the emission and the reception of the photon. Let's consider that vs is the velocity of the photon when its source s is fixed and doesn't move. Consequently, during a Doppler effect, ve equals vs minus little vs where little vs is the velocity of the source, upwards. Let's consider that the gravitational effect and the Doppler effect abolish each other. And thus, Vs equals Vr, consequently, Ve equals Vr minus little Vs, it's equivalent to, little Vs equals Vr minus Ve. Finally, we conclude that, little Vs equals G times T. And it is the correct formula that can be demonstrated for the pound Rebka experiment, in a difficult manner, by using the complicated Einstein's relativity. I suggested that the gravitational effect is because of the mass of a photon. I also suggest that this mass can be found easily by making or observing a gravitational blue shift or red shift of the light in a vacuum. And by using the formulas of the photon energy which are concluded from the frequency or the acceleration of the light only. Yes, the light has conventionally an acceleration even if the light speed is considered constant for most of scientists. But you may ask. Why only the frequency? First of all, we know that, by using an acceleration for the photon when it is allowed in special relativity, instead of the velocity of the photon which is considered constant, Einstein's lovers can have easily a correct answer. Also, by using the frequency of the light wave instead of its velocity, Einstein's lovers can also have easily a correct answer. However, we notice here that in all Einstein's theories, we should always avoid the use of the speed of light in our calculations in order to have easy answers without using any mathematical coefficient. As a result of my work about the Michelson-Morley experiment, and after verifying many light effects, I accept the change of the frequency of the light when the reference frame changes. However, in this case, the velocity of the photon changes too and the real constant is obviously the wavelength. This is the case of the Doppler effect. The correct constant is not the speed of light but the wavelength, since the nature of the light source causing the wavelength doesn't change when the reference frame changes. At the end, the equation, C equals, frequency times wavelength, stays always correct. However, everybody should believe that, the wrong principle of the constant light velocity is a not objective complex that scientists are facing. Furthermore, you can find on some cosmic observation articles that after some cosmic events, we could detect that gamma rays are faster than light rays. This already has a ridiculous and complicated explanation by using Einstein's principles of relativity. However my work about Michelson-Morley experiment gives the correct and obvious explanation since it proves also that the speed of light calculated by Maxwell is not the ultimate speed in our nature. Let's talk with some philosophy. Einstein who believed in Spinoza's works tried to prove that the light is superior, like if the light has the characteristics of a god, hence, he refused that something helps the light to be natural. This is the reason why he tried to deny the ether and the mass of the photon. We live actually in a natural Euclidean where there are no space-time curvatures. Furthermore, a light wave propagates in the ether that I proved by my works. And the use of the mass of the photon can help any researcher to make easy and obvious demonstrations concerning the behavior of the light. Einstein's theses were rejected before me by two famous Nobel laureates who are, Philip Leonard and Johannes Stark. 
A book entitled, Hundert Autoren gegen Einstein has even been published against the relativity theories and it was the result of a collaboration between several scientists of that time. Also, let's remember, Walter Ritz, who was discriminated because of his lengthy criticism of Maxwell Lorentz electromagnetic theory, which is inappropriate with the comprehensive laws for the propagation of electrodynamic actions. Don't think that I am a pro-Nazi, I am only an objective science lover. My purpose is only to make physics look easy, natural and obvious to our young students. My purpose is also to make physics perfectly objective and free from all subjective beliefs. I want you also to discover the very useful thesis that I published, a thesis about Newtonian mechanics rotations and about differential operators. My work proposes a new method to avoid the problems of Newtonian mechanics in the quantum scale. It can also answer some questions that arise when studying some cosmic objects that rotate at a very high linear speed, without needing any relativity of Einstein. My work contains also elementary differential operators that can easily be integrated and used for electromagnetism and radiations. I am also using the different Nabla operator which I demonstrated mathematically in this article. This demonstrated differential tool enables to deal differently with the millennium problem about Navier-Stokes equation. You will find the link to this article in the description of this video below, and I will be ready to answer all your questions regarding all my works. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this will help you make new scientific findings. Regards, Akram Louise.